Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how I created this floating desk last Saturday in my daughter's bedroom using just a couple of sheets of 12mm MDF and some 20mm batten. I'm particularly pleased with the curved profile of the front of the desk and I call it floating desk because there's no obvious sign of how the desk is fixed in place. Okay, so the plan is to make this sort of shape something like that anyway I'm just marking out the dimensions in millimetres so that I can cut some battens because the plan is to get two pieces of 12mm MDF and then in between them I'm going to sandwich some 20 by 20 millimetre battens the idea is I'll be putting these around the wall which will give the desk its strength and I'm also going to interspace them within the desk itself to give it support, hopefully to stop it bowing. Okay, today's toolkit is reasonably involved but it's all fairly straightforward stuff. The wall battens are 20 mil squared, this is actually 25 by 20. I use these inside the table to give it its strength. The battens are attached to the wall using these brown plugs and 60 by 4mm wood screws. Electric drill with a 6mm diameter drill bit for these wall plugs and an electric screwdriver. Not necessary if you haven't got electric, you can use a manual. The desk itself is made from 12mm MDF with these 20mm deep battens interspersed inside the desk to give it its strength. And I've put a strip of 4mm ply on the front of the desk is bent around the shape of the desk. Just as easy, in fact easier, to use hard board, which is slightly thinner than this, but this is what I had lying about. I used a sliding bevel because my walls weren't completely 90 degrees, so this is a great tool when you've got uneven angles that you need to accurately measure. And I also used the combination square as well. I've got some 25mm wood screws that I used to screw battens to the inside of the desk and 20 by 1.6 millimeter panel pins to attach the ply board to the front of the desk. I also used some panel pins on the top of the desk which are slightly longer than this, more like 40 millimeters. And all the panel pins have been recessed with a punch and then filled with a two part wood filler. I've got a piece of sandpaper on a sanding block. This is 120 grade just to sand down the edges of the front of the desk and also to remove the excess wood filler. I've got my trusty DeWalt laser which I use to get the level for the desk but if you haven't got one of those as I suspect you won't spirit level is absolutely fine. Last but not least one of the most used tools in my kit is this electric plane. There's quite a lot of adjustment to make to fit the desk into the recess and this has been invaluable. I don't know what, how I would have managed without it. Last but not least, the all-important wood adhesive for gluing all the parts of the desk together. Okay, step one, I've got to mark out the level of the desk using my trusty laser level. First job is to put battens around the wall to support the desk. So unfortunately I'm starting on the curve of the chimney, the slope of the chimney, so I've got a batten that I've cut to that profile, marked out a couple of screw holes and I'm going to drill a couple of holes now to get it off the wall. A couple of plugs. Bit of a tip this, if you tap the plugs into the wall like that, they're not going to crack the plaster when the screw goes in. Now screwing the batten into place. Nice secure fixing. Check my level. Right, that's spot on. Now I've got to do the same thing all the way around.
got my sheet of MDF and I'm marking the curves for the desk using a piece of string which I'm basically positioning completely freehand. Got that on one line and that on the other with a pencil and I'm just drawing a curve there and then starting from the opposite direction I meet up with the curve in the middle. Bear in mind we had a bit of discussion in the family to work out the shape and we're going for this middle line here which I'm now going to cut out using my jigsaw. A little bit of a tip here, if you clamp a piece of metal or a piece of wood down you can use that as a guide so that you can achieve perfectly straight lines with your jigsaw. Okay, this bit I have to do freehand. That's my shape. The hardware's not done yet because I've got to put, create another identical one that sits underneath to create the effect that the table is floating or unsupported. These battens are going to be sandwiched in between two layers. So I've created a second layer to go underneath like this. So, so now what I'm going to do is create some supports in the middle because if the two layers were left MDF being MDF, chances are they would bow down. So the next stage is to sandwich the two layers together. Sandwiching these buttons in between the two layers because I'm hoping this will stop the MDF from warping. I think glue is a pretty crucial ingredient in this because if I can tension the layers together and stop them moving then I think we're halfway there Now all that remains for me to do is to glue this lattice work on the top and then to put the top of the desk down on top of it and then, and then nail it into place. Then I nailed the top section of the desk down to the rest of the desk. The reason I use pins rather than screws is I can recess the nails with a punch and then fill them much more easily than I would be able to if I'd screwed the desk down. The last job that remains to be done, cut a long strip of 4mm ply and I'm going to slowly and gradually bend and tack this around the front edge just to give it that final little extra added strength as well as obviously to make it look good. desk now has the 4mm piece of ply nailed around the edge. I've got to say I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, final moment of truth.
And there we go. Uh, so that's it. Day's work and the floating desk is now in position. I've got to say I'm really pleased with the finished result and there's something quite cool about the curves. But perhaps the best thing about it is that there are no obvious signs of any support. So I really hope you found today's video useful. As usual, details of all the tools I've used in the video will be available in the description at the end. If you like what you've seen, please click on the like button below. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.